I went to Kazakhstan in October 2023 and it was one of the most beautiful destinations that I have ever been to. Did you know that Kajak literally translates into a wanderer or an independent person that reflects the rich history of nomads in the country? In fact, Kajakistan would literally translate into the land of wanderers. Isn't that amazing? This video is going to be divided into various sections and we are going to be talking about visa, flight tickets, immigration, weather, accommodation, food options and a lot more things that will help you plan your Kajakistan trip with ease. So let's get started. The first thing that I want to cover is the visa. So if you are an Indian passport holder, you get 14 days visa free entry. If you're from any other country, I will leave a link in the description box below that will tell you whether or not you need to apply for a visa and how to do that. The next step is how to reach Kajakistan. I have been wanting to go to Kajakistan since almost the June of 2023. Now, when I was tracking the flight tickets on Kiwi.com, that's my favorite go-to website to find the cheapest flight tickets, it was showing almost 25,000 INR for one person, one way. From June to September is the peak season for Kajakistan. That's when you can witness the best and the most pleasant weathers, the turquoise waters, the greenery around, and everything that Kajakistan has to offer. And that is why it's an expensive time to plan your trip. By the end of September, I got a lot of notifications saying that the prices to Kajakistan has been slashed by 50% and I decided to book my tickets. It costed us, me and my husband both, 40,000 rupees for a to and fro ticket to Almaty. Now we added 5 kgs to each of our tickets. So the ticket initially was only cabin luggage with 5 kgs as the limit. 5 kgs is really less because we were going in winters and we had to carry winter wear. So we decided to add 5 kgs to each one of the tickets. So we had 10 each, only cabin baggage and no check-in luggage. Okay, That costed us approximately 5,000 extra. So 2,500 for 5 kgs. Now I advise you to add all the baggage to your ticket when you're booking it because if you're going to do that on the airport, it's going to cost you as much as 1000 rupees for each kg. So now you can see it on the screen that this is the breakup of the ticket and the travel insurance and everything that we paid for. So the total came around this much. The second thing is that while you can get your flights to Shimkant, Astana, etc., I would uh, recommend that you get your flight tickets to Almaty because it's the closest to India and that is why it's the cheapest ticket as well. The third thing is that I got an Air Astana ticket. So as you can see that on MMT shows, it's an Air Astana flight, right? So when we went to uh, check in online, it did not let us do it. It said that the flight did not exist. So I went to Fly Aristan and I tried it out there and I was able to check. So sometimes if it is an affordable ticket and it shows Air Astana, it might not be Air Astana. So you can go to Air, Air, uh, Fly Aristan and you can check in there. So remember that because I got really scared and I had to figure it out and make my trip just decided to tell me they don't know anything about it and all of that happened. And the last thing is that do check in online before you travel. This will help you get the best seats, free seats. And please do get a window seat because you're going to be mesmerized by the views from the window. Look at this. After almost three hours, we reach Kajakistan. There is not much time difference between India and Kajakistan. I think it is about 30 minutes, so it's not a worry. We just simply got our passports stamped and um, went outside the airport. It was very simple. There was no trouble at all. So the next step is currency. As we got out of the airport, we realized that we obviously need local cash. There were two counters where we could exchange the currency. So before you board your flight to Almaty, remember to... Remember to check what is the going rate for your currency. So right now, for example, one INR is equivalent to 5.53 tenge and one USD is somewhere about 459 tenge. So this is something that you need to remember so you know what kind of conversion rate you are receiving. So on both the counters for the convert, uh, currency conversion, the rates were really bad. So we just decided to use our city bank cards and use the ATM and withdraw the cash from there. So we withdrew 10,000 tenge, which came up to somewhere about um, 1,742 rupees. 
an essential conversion rate of 5.74, which is great according to me. So while we were carrying around 500 USD to be on the safer side, we always had this plan to use our Citibank cards to withdraw cash and not worry about carrying carrying so much cash or, or be short on cash during our trip. Instead of carrying cash, I would recommend that you talk to your banks and get to know the currency conversion rates and all of that um, because it's much more convenient way of traveling. The next up is SIM card. Now on the airport, we thought the SIM card was really expensive. So we gave it a pass. We decided that we city mein ja ke lenge pe. But uh, what we missed out was, um, you know, you need internet in this country. In Kazakhstan, there are only two languages that people speak. One is Kazakh and one is Russian. If you don't know either one of them, and we did not know either one of them, you are in trouble and you will need Google Translate app. And Google Translate app works only if you have internet in your phone. And we did not have a SIM card to have internet on our phones. But either which was, it was an adventurous journey. So we went out of the airport and we decided to have a cup of coffee. While having that cup of coffee, we met this gentleman who was waiting for his girlfriend and we started speaking. He knew a little bit of English. Um, he was such a sweetheart. He booked us a taxi through Yandax app. He waited with us. He made sure that we find our cab. He spoke to the cab driver. He made sure we are sitting inside the cab and he bid us adieu. So this was a lovely experience. This was our first experience with a local person and we fell in love with the country. They're really helpful guys. Um, so if you are stuck somewhere, try and um, try and talk to a local and they will definitely help you out. If you're not very comfortable doing that, what you can also do is use the information center that is right outside the airport. They guided us on how can we take a bus to the Airbnb that we had booked. So he told us that you can take bus number 92. He told us where the bus stop is and how the bus will look like and all of that. So it was very easy to figure that out. We decided to take a cab because the bus was costing 2,000 tenge each person. And the cab costed us 4,500 tenge, uh, which is essentially a difference of 100 rupees. Finally, um, we reached our Airbnb. This country, mein, if you're booking a hotel or a guest house or an Airbnb, Sabka check-in time will be somewhere around 2 p.m. We did not have internet, so I did not have a way to have a conversation with the Airbnb owner. And we decided that we will The locals told us to find Maxim store, M-A-X-I-M. We found three of them, but all of them were out of SIM cards. And finally, I met this girl from India who was pursuing MBBS there and she helped me out. She told me to go across the street. She showed me where to go. Finally, we went there. We met two other guys from India who were uh, pursuing their MBBS there. They helped us get a SIM card. Now, the problem is that if you're going to get a SIM card from the city, you are supposed to recharge it. For recharging, you will need a local Kajak bank account, which you can't have. So it's an uh, entire hassle to get it sorted outside the city. But those two guys were really helpful. They used their own Kajak bank account and recharged the SIM for us. And we paid them in cash. It costed us somewhere around uh, 3,500 tenge. And it gave us almost 44 GB of internet, which I think was a great deal. The other alternative to this would be to switch on your international roaming packs on your phone. So, for example, that I'm using Airtel and Airtel has one day international roaming pack starting from 699, I think. Even if you have the international roaming pack on, try and not use the internet without having a conversation with them or without being very clear on what the rates are going to be. Because I switched on my internet for, uh, I think, about five minutes and they sent me a bill of almost 1900 rupees. I had an entire argument with them. Never mind. Uh, the story is from, for some other day. But please try not to use your internet in any other country without having an international data pack. The next thing that I want to talk about is stay. Like I told you that we booked an Airbnb for the first night that we arrived in Almaty. The place was really nice. It was beautiful. It was clean. The owners were great. But I do not recommend you book an Airbnb for Kazakhstan. My reasons are simple. Country mein English koi nahi bolta hai. You need to know Kajak or you need to know Russian to be able to have a conversation with anybody. What happens with an Airbnb is that you don't have the owner or you don't have the manager right in front of you or you cannot just go up to them and ask them for help. You have to call them or you have to wait for them to pick up the call, right? Versus in a hotel or in a guest house where you have a reception and you have somebody at your disposal to ask your questions and get directions. The second night that we stayed in Almaty was at the end of our trip. 
and we stayed at Wanderlust Hostel. That was a beautiful experience. Got a private room there. They had a kitchen that we could use. They had uh, utensils that we could use. We could cook there. A lot of restaurants were nearby. The person who was sitting at the reception spoke English, which made things a lot easier for us. In terms of cost, the Airbnb costed us 5,700 rupees and the Wanderlust hostel for a night costed us 2,203 rupees. I understand that if you're traveling with family or your partner or your kids, you can't stay in a hostel. But then I would advise you to look into a guest house or a proper hotel. And the next tip that I want to give you about the stay is whenever you're booking on any platform, whether it is booking.com or make my trip, don't try and find your hotels which are near to the city center because the city center is near the Almaty 2 station, which is far away from the places that you are going to be at in Almaty. So you want to find hotels which are near the Zenkov Cathedral or the Central Mosque or the Green Bazaar. Okay, so make sure that you remember that while you're uh, looking for a hotel in Almaty. Is it safe to travel in Almaty is a question that a lot of people ask me when I revealed it to my friends and family that I'm going to Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. It is a very safe country. It is a very tourist friendly country. And if you are an Indian, you are going to meet a ton of amazing and helpful Indian MBBA students there. The next is the apps that you need to have. So this is this is a section that generally you don't find in international travel videos or vlogs. But Kazakhstan is a country where you need to have these three apps in your phone. The first one is a translation app. We use the basic translation app that is already there in our iPhone. The second one is Yandex. Yandex is like Uber or Ola. And uh, it's sort of a lifeline there. So make sure that you have installed Yandex on your phone before you leave India. And the last one is Tugis. While Google map works perfectly fine, but there are a lot of places that Google map does not mark well or it will send you somewhere else. It happened to us and we paid almost thrice the taxi fare because we were lost. Tugis is there. Tugis is a map system which works way better in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan versus Google map. So have Tugis installed in your phone as well. The next step is weather. Just like I said earlier, that June to September is the peak season to go to Kazakhstan. So flight tickets are always expensive during that time. But at that time, it's the most pleasant weather because it's summer and monsoons. Very little monsoon most summers. So very very pleasant weather in uh, Almaty. Also very very expensive tickets. Uske siwaye, um, I think October, in my opinion and in my recommendation, is the best one to go to Kazakhstan because the weather is pleasant. You still have everything open. Other than that, the temperature falls down to below zero degrees. It's snowing. A lot of places are closed and it's so cold that you probably won't be able to go to most of the places. Right? So you won't be able to enjoy the beauty of Kajakistan. What type of destination is Kajakistan? Kajakistan is a destination that has something to offer for everyone. solo travel If you have your kids, there are a lot of uh, fun activities that you can do. Or if you're traveling with your partner, it's an extremely romantic destination. In fact, uh, we went to Kajakistan and it felt like it was another honeymoon for us. It will feel like, you know, you were in between some Yash Chopra movie or some Karan Johar movie or a a mini Switzerland. You know, it's so, so beautiful that I cannot describe you. You can just look at the videos and the photos that's running in the background. Hitchhiking. And this is... uh, controversial thing because I have seen a lot of vlogs and a lot of vlogs and a lot of vlogs and most of them recommended hitchhiking. I wanted to try hitchhiking and I tried and I failed miserably because I didn't have any opportunity to hitchhike for one time. There are many reasons for this reason. But uh, the first and foremost thing that I want to or say is that if you have luggage or if you have suitcases, it's going to be a very difficult task for you to hitchhike. We had two suitcases and it wouldn't be comfortable to hitchhike. So maybe that was one reason that we were not very comfortable um, hitchhiking. The second thing is your time. If you have a lot of time to wait it out on the road, talk to the people, see if you want to hitchhike with them. If somebody is ready to take you to the destination, it's going to take a lot of time. So, So I don't think hitchhiking is for everybody. If you have less luggage, if you have a partner who is on board with this entire plan, if you don't have kids, is when, you know, is when hitchhiking actually becomes easy. Don't think that, it, you know, if you hitchhiking, I will just hitchhike and I will go. It's a difficult thing to do. 
in my personal opinion at least kyunki mera to experience bahut hi bura tha the next step is food a lot of indians have specifications on what they eat and what they don't eat a lot of you guys are vegetarian but don't worry you will find a lot of restaurants a lot of indian restaurants there in fact when we were browsing uh, when we were looking for a restaurant to eat out we saw a multiple of a multiple indian restaurants which had dal tadka and uh, aloo gobi and lachha paratha and all of that so you will get indian food in almati in sati you might not but the beauty about sati is that most of the places will let you cook and you will most likely be staying in a uh, guest house with a family and they will accommodate your needs if you are a non vegetarian then it's a paradise for you because kazakhstan's cuisine is centered around meat especially horse meat i personally didn't like it it's bitter but you are open to trying it out and you should try it out because um, it's unique to kazakhstan's culture other than that there are few things that i would definitely recommend you to try one is lagman another one is manti then there are samsas and then there are the donuts so please try them out Lagman is their di- Lagman is their traditional dish. So if you are going to be asking for Lagman, they just give it to you. Manti is like uh, momos, but it's stuffed with meat. Samosa is like baked version of a samosa, but it has meat inside. I don't know how to explain it. It's really yummy and it's available for breakfast. So grab that. And donuts are wraps. You will find that um, everywhere in Almaty, Sardi, or in Kazakhstan, Egypt. Besides that, whether you are a vegetarian or a non-vegetarian, don't miss out on trying their huge breads, which has a lot of sesame seeds in between. Um, those are really tasty. It's heavy, it's dense, and it's filling. It can stay on for days. So you know you can grab those and you can keep eating them uh, as and when you are hungry. But it's really yummy. I loved it. In terms of food, I think the Jakistan is pretty affordable because we ended up spending, I think, around ten thousand rupees for five to six days that we stayed in Almaty Sati, and uh, this included a bottle of vodka that we uh, bought off a grocery store. The last thing that I want to talk about is the budget. We had a thirteen days trip to Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, out of which uh, we stayed approximately five to six days in Almaty and Sati. That entire thing costed us somewhere under one lakh rupees, and it was a luxurious. Budget because we had a car available to us most of the times when we were in Sati. You can do this entire trip of Almaty and Sati in much lesser than one lakh if you are not going to be hiring a taxi full time. But I think it is a great way of doing it. If you if you can stretch the budget a little bit more till one lakh for a couple, I think it is going to be a beautiful destination. You can stop the vehicle when you want. You can take pictures. You can take videos. You can truly enjoy the beauty if you have. a vehicle as your disposal you can also rent it out if you like for that you need to have an international driver's permit so please take that along without that they'll not give you a car that was just almaty and sati our trip was a total of 13 days where we covered aksu zabagli shimkant and turkestan in kazakhstan and tashkent and samarkand in uzbekistan we traveled via land borders we took the train buses we took share cabs and we did a lot of um, other activities as well i will cover that in detail in the next videos but if you have any questions about planning your trip to uzbekistan or to kazakhstan please do leave a comment below and i will cover that in the next video if this video helped you out don't forget to like and subscribe the channel guys and i'll see you next time